Hi, it's Matt Giggs here, and I am going to show you how to build your high performance estate agency team. And I'm going to make you do this in just five simple steps. So look guys, this is part of a five part series because if you want a high performing team, you're going to have to go through the work, you're going to have to go through these steps. And by the way, when you do this, not only will your performance change, your business will change, your team will change, the feeling will change, everything's going to change. So we're going to dive in to number one. Now, first and foremost, when I talk about high performing teams with businesses, business owners, people that come to me for training, and by the way, I've just done three training days, which applies to these principles. So this is red hot. This is straight in the heart of how to build a high performing team in 2024. They come to me and they talk about the results not being good enough. Now, I've just popped this model, this pyramid on the board behind me, and it's a pyramid that's been created by a guy called Patrick Lencioni. You should look him up. And it, it's all about the high performing team and the five dysfunctions of preventing you from actually getting there. Now, having been in leadership for over 20 years, I have realized and been amongst some of the best teams that there are going in a state agency. I've also been and witnessed and observed and stepped into teams that are absolutely dysfunctional. Now you're going to be watching this right now because you're thinking about your team and I want you to. And I want you to be really honest with yourself. And the reason for that is because the first one to get right is trust. So here's my question to you. You're watching this video. Do you have a team? Yes. Do your team trust you? Do they trust you to be able to talk to you about anything? And do you trust your team? Do you trust them enough to give them the responsibility, to give them the ownership, to empower them? So we're going to dive into trust because most people I come across, they start up here, they start on results. The results aren't good enough. And in the last 18 months, how many estate agents have achieved their result? How many have got the results that they needed to grow their business, to pay themselves the dividends that they need in order to succeed and be successful? And actually, after all the hard work goes in, to achieve what they need? Well, the question is, not many. Sorry, the answer is, the question is, Definitely not many because look, they focus here. That's where their energy goes. They res we haven't got enough listings. We haven't sold enough houses. That person's not doing a good enough job. That's all I hear. I'm gonna help you by looking at this model right now. The first one is trust. Why is that so important? Well, it's, if you look at the pyramid, why is this the smallest part of the pyramid? And that's because you've got the least amount of control over that area of the five steps. The most control that you've got, which you've got the choice to either build or erode, is trust. So what I'm going to share with you right now is just some of the dysfunctional behaviours that I've seen in teams that are completely toxic, dysfunctional, they don't work together, they're not aligned, there's clicks, there's, there's a bad feeling, there's a bad energy, and you know when you walk into an estate agency, you know you could close your eyes, put sunglasses on and walk in there and you would know just by the energy that you feel whether that's a successful team or not. And I promise you, you've got to do that. Imagine walking to your office tomorrow with your eyes shut, right? They'll all think you're crazy. But if there's a buzz in there and there's good conversations and there's good dialogue, and then you open your eyes and you've got people smiling and they're genuinely happy and they want to be there and they're offering teas, coffees, and they're talking about positive subjects, not other people. You know you're onto something good but you're watching this for a reason. And you're watching this because you wanna know how to build trust. Not to erode it, how to build it. Now, for me, what you'll see in dysfunctional teams, guys, is people conceal their weaknesses. They hide away their mistakes, the things that they probably aren't so strong at, their shortcomings. And that is such a big challenge to most people because they feel judged. They feel like someone is going to show them up. And if they get shown up, they're going to feel bad. And that is everything you don't want in a team. You want people to reveal 
their weaknesses, to own the fact that they're not strong at every area of the business. Now, if you revert back to a, uh, 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 there's a, a fantastic um, psychometrics test that you can do called DISC. And on DISC, you've got four main profiles, D, I, S, C. They're all different profiles. We're all different people. How can you expect to not have weaknesses? So as a business leader, as a team leader, I want to understand where you're not so great in order to give you the support. And what you hear from the high performing teams, and I've heard it a lot this week, is people say, the admin side of what I do really holds me back from doing what I'm great at. Now you can say, well, you've got to get it done and you need to do it and we'll push you down that hard and we're gonna push you hard to do the things that you can't do very well. Because we want to make you pay. What the fuck is all that about, right? You want your team to play to their strengths. Imagine a Premier League football team and the goalkeeper runs out and just before he goes out on the pitch, you say to him, look, hang on a second, I want you to go and play striker today. I want you to go and play striker. He'll look at you and think you're crazy. Why? Because the striker scores the goals. The guy who's up there at the moment is the one that bangs the goals in. Why am I going to go and replace that person when he's already there? <coughs> so for me, apologies for the cough, I've had man flu. For me, people who are in a high performance team understand their weaknesses, but they do that by knowing what the fucking hell they're really good at doing. They really back themselves. They know their A game, and it's their A game that you want. They're the striker, you put them up front and you feed them. Sorry if the analogy doesn't work for you and you hate football. Think about the same thing in any sport, in any organisation that is successful. The best people know what they're good at and they spend most of their time doing it. What you get in high performance teams is people are doing more of what they love, so they love what they do. It's no fluke there, right, that the feeling's a lot greater if you're doing what you love. So why don't these guys do it? Well, they come in, they do a job, we want you to pull you around on your weaknesses and show you up, make you feel bad that you haven't done the task. What sort of leadership is that? You're gonna build trust, guys, build trust. The other thing you're gonna see is people don't actually wanna ask for help. And why don't people wanna ask for help in a team? What's the answer? Because they fear the reply. They think they're gonna get someone saying stuff like this, I'm too busy. That's the classic, I'm too busy to help. Oh, I, I don't know, you can ask somebody else. So when you hear that kind of reply, because people are all doing the same thing, because they're all concealing their weaknesses, no one really knows who's really good at the stuff to go and ask for help. So imagine that, you're in this team and you're working and you're slogging your guts up, doing loads of different things because that's what you've been told to do. Yet most of the different things you fucking hate. You don't enjoy it, it lowers your energy. Yet if I got you doing the things that you're great at doing, for 80% of your time, you're gonna be absolutely maximizing your result. But I'm telling you now, the guys over here, you know, they don't only, and they don't only love questions, they will say that there are no silly questions. They will encourage questions, difficult ones, curious ones. They want people to be able to feel free to come to them. And what you're gonna see over here with the five different areas of the high performance team, the kind of behaviors that you're gonna see is they also recognize excellence. So you have higher standards in a higher performing team. You have lower standards in a low performing team. And what you're gonna get here is because people don't wanna ask for help, People don't offer help as well. They go into their own silo in a team. They're in their own desk, their own space. They're emailing the person that's fucking five yards away, passing on the responsibility because they don't want to talk to each other because they can't stand the environment. Now, I might be exaggerating, but I have seen it firsthand. And actually, some of it's caused by the fact, in fact, all of it's caused, in my opinion, because you don't have a bad team, you have a bad leader. Let me say that again, you don't have a bad team, you have a bad leader. First thing is, if you're leading a team and you're watching this, look at yourself first. Are you someone that conceals your weaknesses? Are you vulnerable with your team? Or do you pretend you're good at everything? My team know I'm shit at admin. 
I'm rubbish at organisation. I just about get through because I've got the right people around me. That's what you've got to be aiming for. And the fact that I admit my flaws connects me to the guys and they help me with their areas of strength, which is organisation, admin, the things that I can't do as well as them. And the other thing is they fail to tap in to the skills around them. You just said about the team, and you love the analogy really, I know you do, but if you've got a team, everyone's in a position. And everyone who's in a position has a strength to be in that position. Think about your team. In a state agency, you could be going out there and putting houses on the market, because that is where you excel. But imagine if you're doing that, and actually you're more super organized. And you're not only super organized, you're good at organizing the people around you and helping to take the weight off of those people around you so they can accelerate in their roles. What a team player you would be, right? And that's what we're looking for because you don't want people in your business sitting there moaning and groaning, talking about the politics of the organization, the bureaucracy, or normally other people. Because that's what shit people do. They spend their time talking about stuff they can't control and spending all their time talking about people that they don't like. And the reason why they don't like them is because they think they're concealing their weaknesses and not actually being honest, vulnerable, looking at recognising their excellence, showing them where they're doing the things really, really well. They give responsibility to people that take it and own it. They also work together. So if you've got different people with different strengths, you're collaborating to get to the result that matters for your team. So we'll get to that. We've got another four videos after this one, but I want you to ask yourself, are you tapping into one another's strengths? Are you collaborating in your team? Or are you having to come up with all the ideas and the solutions? Because how much pressure is that on a leader? I've sat there at night and I have just been involved with a, what could be described as a very, very difficult meeting with a team, where that team almost, I'm not gonna use the word colluded, but all of their conversation was about their leader. And their leader inwardly thought he was letting all of his team down. Yet all they wanted was him to take responsibility, was for him to be vulnerable and ask for help. An hour and a half later, if you saw their WhatsApp group, it was like a joint therapy session. It was like, you, you know when there's pressure and you just release that pressure? And it took the leader to be vulnerable right at the start. To say that he's stressed, he's feeling the pressure, he's working on sorts of difficult hours and he's under pressure at home and all of these different things. And the team are really empathetic. They're really supportive, but they pushed this. It was all like pushing magnet, or two magnets together. He was going that way, they were going that way. And every single month it's getting pushed and further and further apart. Now they're together. So they've got a great start. So the thing that they've now got in their team is responsibility across it starting with him as the leader. They recognised the excellence. They talked about what each person in that room was great at doing in their team. And the big thing which kicked it all off, and you can call it vulnerability, but you own the weaknesses. And for me, this is what I want you to understand. There's a lot of hype about being a self-employed estate agent, working on your own every day in the quiet and you've got loose women on in the background and then you've got the news and then you've got more news and then you've got that Amazon guy turning up at the door. How are you seriously, how are you seriously going to deliver outstanding results in those environments? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but for me, being a human being, being freaking real, having high levels of energy isn't about you bringing that to your party yourself every single day. It's about how you create that energy around you. And once you've got that, do you like what I did there? You've got that. You've got trust. 
You're building it block by block. Think about the trust wall in your business. Where is it at the moment? How high up is it? Or are you taking blocks out by not giving responsibility, not empowering people, playing people to people's strengths, making sure anyone can come to you at any one time? All of those blocks can go back up when you do that. And when you bring this freaking wall up here, no one's going to knock it down. And that's trust. So there you have it, part one on how to build your high performance estate agency team. We've just covered part one, which is trust. And the reason why it took 15 minutes to get my point across is because if you don't have trust, you have nothing. And I want you to be honest about this because the first person you need to trust is yourself. And if you're gonna bullshit yourself, you ain't gonna get anywhere. You need to look in the mirror, accept where you are today, understand where you wanna go, and ask those questions that I just did in the video before. And you'll enjoy it, I promise. It's actually really enlightening and it's inspiring. I've had to look at myself regularly in the mirror over the years because I know I'm far from perfect. So here we go. Why listen to Matt Giggs? Well, over 28 years, I've helped sell over billions and billions of pounds worth of property and built some of the best teams around the country. I'm a state agent mentor, I'm a state agent coach, trainer, but I'm actually a business owner and real estate agent day to day. So I'm not someone who's gone into training because I can't do it. I'm doing it and then training what I do. There's a bit of a difference there. That's why you're gonna see website links, you can see training that I've put online. By the way, the training that I've got online, it's like this, it's like me in your living room, living room every morning or in your study, training you one-to-one -one with downloadable guides. Guys, this stuff's everywhere now. I've been putting it out there for about nine months. You should come with me on this journey. Hit the like button, subscribe. Part two's coming. And I need your feedback all the way along. Good luck, guys. I'll see you on the next one.